Right, let's get this ball rolling. No? Ha! Hey guys, I was super impressed how much they managed to slim down Son of Mini R4. That's the extreme series devices that I covered in this video. And since then I was kind of wondering what's gonna be the next device and it's turned out that it's gonna be a Son of Zigbee Mini L. If you are familiar with ITS products code then you know that, well, L stands for no neutral and everyone living in the UK, at least with my wiring standards, is going to be super happy about it because all of my in-wall sockets, they don't have neutral. So it's a kind of a big deal, especially that you can connect a switch like that even if you have a neutral present behind your wall switch. So now you can actually choose between having a Wi-Fi and a Zigbee equivalent of the same switch from the Extreme series. And as I said before, it's really impressive how much smaller that device is compared to the original Zigbee device that you could use without neutral. I mean, I could compare it to the Zigbee Mini series, but that required a neutral uh, wire, so that's not a really fair comparison. Just like previous edition, it's a single channel relay that uses Zigbee to connect to your home automation. So you're gonna need a hub of some sort and it will allow you to connect a switch in one or two way configuration to it. So that way you can still utilize the hardware switches and take advantage of the smarts and toggle your lights. It uses Zigbee 3.0 and it's rated for six amps plenty when it comes to directing your energy towards your light bulbs. I was however slightly surprised that this relay, despite not being rated for 10 amps, was slightly bigger than the Wi-Fi equivalent from the Extreme, extreme Series. Now, it is 2 millimeters thicker, but let's face it, it's still one of the smallest relays that I had to play with. The interface of the relay is pretty barebone. You'll find a button which doubles as a pairing and a toggle buttons. And if you click it three times, you'll be able to also change the different switch input type from push to a toggle. That's useful, but remember to configure your uh, relay before you actually install it. Otherwise you'll have a problem switching to the other mode. Now, the first thing that I wanted to do is actually to look inside. But before you even try to open it, a word of warning, even if you disconnect this device from the power, it retains a little bit of current inside. I actually discovered that you can toggle the relay about three to four times when disconnected because of the stored power in probably a capacitor or something. The device was extremely easy to open and inside, this time I have a relay print available so I can confirm that this is 6 amp relay inside, resistive rather than inductive load, so bear that in mind. After playing with a recent release from a Zigbee series, the humidity and temperature sensor with a display, which I covered in this video, I kind of expected a new Zigbee uh, 3.0 IC to be present on the PCB. And I was not wrong because it's featuring exactly the same IC, in this case EFR30 through MG22. Now, while the IC is capable of being more than end device because it's a no neutral version of it, it just doesn't have enough current to act this way and you'll have to settle for an end device. So you won't be able to use these to build up your mesh network. It's a shame. Other than that, there is no much to it. There's a couple of dev pads available, but it's a Zigbee 3.0 device, so it should be compatible with most of the Zigbee hardware out there. So you don't really even have to flash it with anything to take advantage in your DIY home automation or home assistant, if that's what you're into. We also have the same terminals present that were on the Wi-Fi version of this Extreme Edition product, so they are big enough to uh, slot in a single wire and there is enough of them to cover your bases. Basically, all you have to do is just plug in the live uh, wire in and out and then use Reminding 2 to connect your switch for the mechanical actuation of your light. 
it's Zigbee. So I've used the Son of Zigbee bridge to actually connect it to the EULink account and give it a test drive. It pairs instantly, I had no problems there, and shows up in a EULink app as a Zigbee 3.0 switch. It's a single channel relay with a single action really being available. Additionally, on top of that, you have loops, timers, and schedules, but there is no other settings. If you want to change the switch type, you'll have to configure that by using a hardware button. And just as any other Ewing devices, you'll have an access to obviously voice assistant controls via relevant skills, and that's pretty much it. Now toggling on and off the device was quite responsive and I had no problems whatsoever, so yeah, I would definitely recommend it to use it with Ewing app. But can you use it with other ecosystems? I've got that question asked before, so I figure it I'm gonna check it out as well. So I've plugged it into a Gara ecosystem and unfortunately I was not able to even pair it, so that was a fail. Slightly disappointed, I switched over to my Benex Smart Zigbee Hop and that uses Tuya and paired beautifully. The same options were available for that switch, so yay, if you want to use it with Tuya, that's another option that you can consider. And I know what you're going to say, but what about Zigbee to MQTT and custom coordinators? So obviously I had to give it a go as well. But before we jump into Zigbee to MQTT integration, let's talk about power consumption because you probably want to know some details too. Now in that video I've discovered that measuring non-neutral devices is really, really difficult. I mean, they weren't posting any consumption at all in the idle mode. And that was exactly the same with this switch. Using my kilowattometer, I was not able to detect the additional charge. I'm sure it consumes some of the power, but the power that the device it uses is minuscule. When activated, however, I discovered 0 0.2 watts of power additionally being drawn on top of what the light bulb would request for. So it's one of the most energy efficient options to actually drive your light. After recent price changes in electricity in UK, this is something I'm particularly sensitive to. Speaking of Node-RED, Zigbee to MQTT and custom coordinators, I was completely prepared to start hacking this. But this device came to me quite late and the nice surprise was that as soon as I plugged it in and paired it with my son of dongle that I've used for this purpose, well, it was recognized by Zigbee to MQTT and apparently the libraries are already pinned. It means that you don't really have to do anything special to start receiving information and controlling the device. Just log into your Zigbee to MQTT dashboard and you'll be able to see the device and then control it from there. Or just use typical MQTT commands to take ownership of that. I felt a little bit lazy and I've used one of the Agara projects I wrote a long time ago. But then I discovered a small bug. So I'm gonna table that for later because I want to fix this and redesign it, considering that I have a little bit more knowledge. So if you are looking for a nice flow to control the Zigbee devices and create a power meter, meter when the power meter isn't really present, like on this, because that switch doesn't really come with a power meter, then that'll give you a, a reason to subscribe, I guess. The last piece of information you want to know is pricing. And it's not terribly expensive. It is priced at $13.99.USD and available from uh, after 15th of January 2023. So soon enough, you'll be able to secure one of these for yourself. Personally, I am super happy that another choice for DIY home automation freaks like me exists and I'll be able to add it to my home automation setup without taking advantage of Link because, well, no dread all the way, right? Okay, I've got one more son of device that's gonna be released soon, so if you're interested all in what that's gonna be, then hey, you know how YouTube works, I'm not going to explain anything. But I have a couple of social media accounts listed down below, so do check it out and have a browse and hit me up in there if you want to start a conversation. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.